Welcome back to the Naval News with Subbrief. Today we're beginning our briefing down in the Mississippi coast at the Huntington Ingalls Shipyard, who will be building the next generation frigate, FFX. Last week, Secretary of the Navy failing quietly dropped one of the most consequential surface fleet announcements I've seen in years. Uh, not a new destroyer, not a new unmanned ship, a new frigate program. And this matters because for more than a decade, the US Navy has struggled to answer one simple question. What does a modern American frigate look like? Well, today we're gonna to break that down and we're gonna go over what this program is, what hull did they choose, and why the ship does not need Aegis or a spy radar to function. Let's get into it. To understand why this frigate exists, you have to understand what failed before it. The Navy spent the 2010s betting heavily on littoral combat ship. That program promised flexibility, modularity, and speed, but it delivered limited survivability, constrained combat power, and high operating cost. And to replace this LCS, the Navy launched the Constellation class frigate program. On paper, it looks solid. In reality, it suffered from excessive design changes, weight growth, schedule slips, and a shrinking percentage of commonality with the parent design ship, which was the whole point. The result was a ship that cost more, took longer to build, and became harder to deliver at scale. So eventually the Navy pulled the plug on it, and that left a serious gap in shipbuilding here in the United States. Now there was no LCS replacement coming, and there's no small combatant pipeline. We've lost a lot and we're really behind. We're not building the LCS anymore. And there's no way for uh, the Navy to add hulls quickly to our ship fleet. This is a serious issue. Last week, Secretary of Navy announced a new frigate initiative tied to a broader fleet expansion. This is not a minor course correction. This is a philosophical reset of how the United States thinks about shipbuilding. Instead of designing another high-end warship from scratch, the Navy's doing something very deliberate. They're starting with a proven American hull already built in the United States. With real sea time, the hull is the legend class national security cutter that serves in the U.S. Coast Guard right now. The legend class is a Coast Guard ship, not a Navy ship, and that's a very important distinction to make. Let's talk about what the Coast Guard version has and is right now and talk about what the Navy may do to change that. So full load displacement is 4,600 tons with crew provisions and a full load of fuel. Uh, it's built for long range patrols across blue water oceans. It has high endurance, really good sea, sea keeping in a high sea state and is very reliable. Does not need a lot of repairs so it can stay at sea for longer and longer periods of time. They're entirely constructed here in the United States at two shipyards, Huntington Ingalls Industries, which is the one building the new frigate, and Bollinger Shipyards. The current armament for the Coast Guard is a 57 millimeter deck gun, an optional uh, phalanx close-in weapon system, and multiple 25 millimeter and 50 caliber weapons can be installed port and starboard. There's also a permanent aviation detachment uh, on board to support helicopter and drone operations. Critically, this is what it doesn't have. It doesn't have any VLS. No vertical launch system is on this ship whatsoever. It has no anti-ship missiles. It has no anti-submarine sonar. So there's no torpedo tubes. There's no Aegis combat system connecting everything. It cannot perform area air defense. But that's not a flaw. That's the point. The Navy's not buying this ship as is. They're buying the hull, the product, uh, propulsion plant that's on board already and proven, and the production maturity, the supply line and the assembly building that Huntington Ingalls already has can get to work on this right away. That's what they're building. Now, roughly at 4,600 tons with a full load, the Legend class sits squarely in the modern frigate size range, and it's built for 60-day patrols with a large complement of fuel. Um, it can embark aviation assets, like we said, and sustain a uh, underway uh, good you know, speeds at, at high sea states. That's something that the LCS class struggled with because honestly, it wasn't designed for uh, blue water operations, at least not the independence class. And with anything over a sea state five, they had to reduce their speed, not this ship. This ship can uh, take on you know, uh, shallow waters, littoral waters, and uh, blue waters as well. 
What's important here is that there's meaningful reserve buoyancy already on this ship and load margin. This means the Navy can add weapons and sensors and combat systems to it uh, without having to change the design. They can add weight to it, add uh, communication systems and whatever else the Navy needs on this uh, without having to make major uh, changes to the design itself. That's so critical. But that load margin is not unlimited. The Navy is going to have to decide what does it need? What does it want very carefully and just select those things. Now, the Aegis Combat System and the Spy-6 and Spy family of radars, they do very specific things that this ship does not need to do. For instance, it does area um, air defense, it does missile fire control, controlling missiles, putting uh, solutions in, even correcting uh, targets or changing targets mid-flight. Uh, the Aegis can do uh, ballistic missile defense with some of its variants, and none of that is required for the frigate's position. So um, all the frigate really needs is fleet networking, be able to communicate with the fleet, task group operations, be able to operate in the fleet with that communication, conduct escort missions for uh, whether it's a carrier or it's a shipping uh, company that we're protecting through the Straits of Hormuz, it needs to be able to do that. And then also distributed maritime operations. Frigates need to perform those critical roles. And they can do all that without this Aegis combat system. Now, in fact, installing the Aegis and any spy radar on board would drive costs through the roof and we'd be right back to where we were with the Constellation class with increased crew size, uh, top weight that's way too heavy for the hull that it sits on and the navy already has a lot of destroyers about 75 give or take uh destroyers that can already do that job they don't need a destroyer substitute they need a frigate now here's the requirements for a frigate according to the navy it needs to be able to communicate with, via data link with NATO and American ships via link 16 and link 22. That's encrypted communication, sharing targets, sensor information, and all that like you see here on your display. Uh, cooperative engagement capability, it needs to be able to take this information and put a warhead or fire on a target using information that it doesn't have inherent to its own sensors. So that's cooperative engagement capability. Uh, a Navy standard command and control communication system to, again, communicate with the fleet. Uh, a shared tactical picture, which will be provided if it checks the box on the first two things. All these things can be done without Aegis. Aegis does them too. It doesn't matter cost. A cost of power, weight, cost, time, uh, number of people on board to maintain and operate it. Uh, so this is a good choice because we can achieve the goals of a frigate without the cost of an Aegis. Now, the most realistic outcome is a networked non-Aegis frigate that can escort logistic ships, can conduct some surface warfare mission capability, so it will need to have some kind of anti-ship weapon on board at some point. Uh, it needs to be able to contribute to the sensor picture for the fleet. It should be on the outside, the outer rim of a modern fleet, providing data compare, uh, of what's coming at the fleet, what contacts are around it in that specific direction. It doesn't need to have uh, area air defense in that direction. It just needs to be there and providing sensor data to, to the fleet. It needs to be able to control unmanned systems. This is growing uh, in importance every year. Uh, drone warfare is huge across all domains, uh, but especially the Navy domain. Uh, it needs to be able to have systems that can control drones, even if it does not launch the drone itself. Uh, this frees up destroyers to do destroyer missions, which are like high-end air defense roles, ballistic missile intercepts, uh, area air defense. That's what the destroyers will continue to do, and the frigate will complement that mission. I want you to think about this ship as a shooter and a sensor, but not both. Right. This is not going to be some kind of air defense quarterback. Uh, this ship is designed to be built quickly, repeatedly and flood the Navy with high quality frigates that are fast, reliable, long range endurance. And uh, it, this is really about capacity of the Navy. Get our numbers up, not just prestige and how nice uh, and, and capable a specific hull is. This is about quantity at this point. For the first time in a long time, the Navy is prioritizing deliverability 
with industrial realism. They're being realistic about what we can do. We need to be honest with ourselves. Can't ignore that problem anymore. Uh, get good fleet balance out there. Provide something that is complementing the fleet's capability at that time and not some kind of gold-plated uh, frigate destroyer substitute that will never be finished because it's overweight and uh, if it is ever delivered uh, it'll definitely underperform what expectations were so uh, if this program stays disciplined and they don't overload it with systems that cause it to be overweight uh, just for as one example we could get an incredible, affordable, American-built frigate again for the first time in decades. And so that alone would be a strategic win. So I think Secretary of Navy Phelan is doing a great job. This is another good decision coming out of him. And I'm so excited to see somebody in charge of the Navy who's got realistic expectations about what the Navy needs and how we can provide it at scale quickly. Look at that. Man, that's why we do it right there. <laughs> I mean, why, you know, it's th th this chokes me up because the whole reason why we go to sea is on your screen right now. All right, we'll uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas.